Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a long overdue q and I I feel like I've given little tidbits of updates here and there in the last couple of vlogs on my channel, but I wanted to sit down and film something a little bit more formal and go through some of your guys' questions. As always, I ask you guys on Instagram for questions, so if you wanna be involved in future Q&As or have any follow-up questions to anything I say in this Q&A, um, that's probably the easiest place to reach me, so I'll have that linked down below. But jumping right in, the first question I got was, do you feel refreshed after taking your hiatus from social media? And yes, I know I already touched on this a little bit in I think two vlogs back on my channel, but yes, I am feeling so much more refreshed. I think it was really good for me to kind of take a step back and see in person that I have a full personality and identity outside of social media and just kind of take a breather from everything. Um, something I thought a lot about was my boundaries and what I'm willing to share on social media, what I'm willing to let people comment on and people's perception of me and how that impacts me and my day-to-day -day relationships. And there's so much good that comes from social media, but there's also so much toxicity that comes from it. And that's not necessarily a drag on like the influencer space because I think you can find that in any industry. Um, I feel like most of you know I work full-time in commercial real estate and there's certainly toxic elements to that industry as well and I think in every industry. Um, so that's not again specific to influencer marketing but just it's not healthy to have that many people watching and spectating on your life even if 99% of the comments are really positive. Um, there's always a few negative ones and just taking a step back for me to realize like what I was and wasn't willing to accept and the boundaries I wanted to set I think was really good and I'm feeling like I'm in a good place now. I'm excited to be making content again and for me it was really helpful just to take a couple months break and I really do appreciate every single one of you that checked in on me and was worried about me because I wasn't posting and allowed me to come back to the space three, four months later without really any hesitation um and i know not every creator would have that experience so i'm feeling really lucky for that as well but i think it was really good for me and i'm excited to be back i tried to include a lot of questions about dc just because i want to start pivoting my channel a little bit more towards dc based content and a little bit less about myself um so if you're not interested in dc you might want to like skip ahead a couple of minutes um but a question I get a lot is my favorite and least favorite thing about DC. I think my favorite thing about DC is just the energy and sense of community that the city has. It's a big enough city that there's always something new to do. There's a new restaurant to try, a new bar to go to, um, a museum pop up, but it's small enough that when you go to your local coffee shops or the same sandwich place every day, they recognize you, you recognize them. And it's just a different sense of energy in that way. I also just love running my day-to-day -day errands in the city because I feel like it's such an elevated experience and it's almost surreal sometimes to be running back from the grocery store or like heading out from the gym and you look up and you see the capital like that is a crazy concept to me and i feel like that's something that i am yet to get tired of and talking to some of my coworkers who have lived here for 15 20 years they say the same thing like when you go down north cap and see the capital just like appearing on the horizon that's just so insane to me um or even smaller things the other day i was getting gas at like ninth and n probably i might be off a block or two and there's just these beautiful murals on the wall like something so cool to look at while you're getting gas like it's just that type of energy i feel like you don't get in the suburbs outside of dc in my opinion as far as my least favorite thing about dc i'd say the lack of reliable transit i would love for dc to operate as smoothly as new york does with their subway system i feel like the metro is such a great tool and a little hypocritical of me to say because I do have my car in DC but I still take the metro to work every day just because it's easier and I love the concept of not owning a car like I think that that would just be so much easier if I could fully rely on the metro and it was just built out a little bit more in DC to the point where if I needed to get somewhere more north or even just like anywhere and it didn't take nine minutes between trains or 17 minutes between trains i wish it just operated on that like three four minute rotation and was a little bit more reliable a little bit more expanded um and open later at night i that's probably my biggest issue with dc just because i see that we have the potential for it um more bike lanes more like dedicated walkways for pedestrians like streets where it's just humans no cars i'm so pro that 
um, that I hope that that's the direction that DC takes the next like 10, 15 years. Lots of questions about how dating is in DC and I would say as a whole it's pretty bad. I go through phases of prioritizing it and right now I'm just in a phase where it's so far on the back burner that arguably it's not on the stove. Um, I feel like I'm somewhat actively dating like I'm not off the apps or completely opposed to it by any means I just I feel like the last couple of dates I've been on I've been sitting there and realized that I could not care less what the person in front of me is saying and like he doesn't care about what I'm saying and it's just like why are we doing this you know and I haven't had experience really dating in any other city so I can't compare it except for what I hear from my friends that live in other cities but it seems like DC's a bit more ruthless than other cities and maybe that's just my friends experiences versus mine versus like my friends here i think because it's such a transit city that people have that attitude of if it's come and go anyway why really put an effort and i can certainly be guilty of that as well but if both parties are coming to the table like this is temporary you're gonna move in six months i am gonna move in a year you just never really are putting in your full effort um at least in my experience so i'd say you just have to go in with like a good spirit of like it's either going to be a good time or a good story and kind of hope for the best what are some of your favorite dc smaller local businesses i want to make an entire series of this but i don't know what's the best format for that if it's like a bunch of little mini tiktoks or just showing places more in vlogs or some sort of guide of sorts um but off the top of my head obviously zeke's best coffee shop in DC, Andy's Pizza, best pizza in DC, Streets Markets is my favorite place for kind of like a bodega energy, like grocery store, but you can also get most things that you're gonna need for the day there. I've been really enjoying Pearl's Bagels. It's right by the convention center on 7th Street. And then City Place Cafe downtown is one of my favorite lunch spots. Just like very good grab and go sandwiches, super nice owners, and just like a feel good place. Um, I don't think Mavita is a national chain, but if it is, ignore this. They just opened their second location in DC a couple of weeks ago, and I went for lunch the other day, and the service we had was incredible. DeAndre, my guy, made the experience so much fun. I was laughing my ass off at lunch and 100% want to go back just because of him. Like, I cannot go if he is not working. Um... But that's all I can really think off the top of my head. I'm really bad at recalling things like on the spot. I feel like I need to make a spreadsheet of everywhere I've ever been just so that when I get asked this question, I have better things to pull from. What is still left on your DC bucket list? And I'm embarrassed to admit this because I think I said this in a QA and a like a year ago that I still haven't been to the Library of Congress and really, really want to go. I don't know what's possibly holding me back. Nobody is stopping me. It's extremely obtainable for me and for whatever reason I just haven't so need to get that on the books I really want to do a canal tour of Georgetown I was invited to an event a couple weeks ago now I guess but it interfered with some work event that I had so I couldn't make it for like the unveiling of the canals opening back up so I have a couple of vouchers that I'm so excited to use um, so I definitely want to do that and then just like a bunch of random restaurants i really don't eat out that often besides lunch for work which is just like grab and go city place or sweet green um type places so i feel like i have a lot of restaurants on my list that i've seen on instagram or tiktok or heard about from potville and just want to test out so that's that recommendations for tattoos and piercings in the dc area so i haven't gotten any tattoos here so i can't speak to that i got both my tattoos done in north carolina and honestly i really didn't do any research on either place and i wish i had so can't speak to dc tattoo artists um and i have gotten a couple of piercings in dc i've gotten my third holes my midway and i have an appointment for my helix coming up and I've gotten all of those done from Kyle at Fatty's Tattoos. They have a location on 8th Street and DuPont. I don't know if he works at both or they have different piercers at the DuPont location, but I have always gone to the 8th Street just because that's when the appointments were available and I've had a really good experience there. I haven't seen anybody else in DC, but um, really have no complaints. I feel like he's been very professional, clean, 
um, reasonably priced and everything is healed really well for me. Switching gears a little bit, I got a couple of questions asking for a full video on my job and how I got to my current position and I would be more than happy to do that. I just don't know what format would be the most helpful for you guys. It's not me just talking for 20 minutes about myself. Um, so maybe I'll ask separately on Instagram for specific questions on like resumes or what like skill set I have or I don't know like stuff that's specific to commercial real estate if that's what you guys are interested in or marketing and design within commercial real estate that way it's a little bit more helpful rather than just my specific case because it was pretty specific on how I got to my job. So if anybody feels strongly on the format of that video, feel free to leave that in a comment. Which work clothing items would you recommend investing in first? And I actually really like this question. I think assuming you're following a business professional or like business casual meaning business professional dress code, I would recommend investing in a really nice pair of work pants and matching blazer. Just, I so clearly remember going to the mall after I graduated and feeling so overwhelmed at how expensive work clothes were because I had just graduated college, I had no income, and a pair of pants is a hundred bucks, a nice blazer is a hundred bucks. Everything felt like it was a hundred dollars and I didn't even know where to start. I Everything felt kind of foreign on my body just because I wasn't used to wearing nicer clothes i was used to crop tops and like sweatpants from college um so if you can i would really recommend investing in a nice pair of work pants that you feel comfortable in i found mine from express i wore them every single week multiple times a week for like three years before they gave out and i just repurchased them and then a blazer that kind of it doesn't have to be an exact matching set but like if you have black pants black blazer or navy and navy something that if you need to step into a meeting that's a little bit more formal or you have a pitch a presentation you feel confident in that outfit because likely you're nervous because you're just entering the workforce and if you can walk in knowing that you feel good in the way that you look, not that it's the most important thing by any means, it's just one less thing to worry about. And I've found for myself when I feel good about the way that I'm presenting myself, I typically present what I need to present better. Um, so I'd recommend getting really nice staples and like pants and a blazer. As you have such a good staple set with that, you can find random shirts and bodysuits to go underneath and kind of mix and match a lot easier. Next question I got a couple of times actually, and that was how I've been editing my Instagram pictures, which is so surprising because I really haven't been editing them, honestly. I used to be so guilty of trying to have a perfectly curated feed, which I never really achieved, but spent entirely too much time on just like fine-tuning the smallest little details to try to have a cohesive feed and i kind of gave up on that i feel like everybody did i think it's way more trendy now just to have an authentic feed with very minimal edits so i've been using two apps the last like year and a half or so and i don't hear a ton of people talking about them but maybe i maybe they're super common um the first one is color tone that's one i've been using for a really long time and just like the preset options i feel like they have some good ones and you can kind of mess with different layers of colors and like exposure and stuff like that again pretty minimal edits and then i've also been testing out seti which i believe is it hannah g from the bachelorette bachelor i haven't seen it i just somebody behind the bachelor or the bachelorette is involved with this app she's really pretty she's got blonde hair i think her, her name's hannah but i feel like there were multiple hannahs in one season and i don't know the difference but she came out with an app that's really really good for super minimal edits i've just been testing out the free version but honestly really like it for very natural filters and adding grain so those are the two that i've been using have you considered getting botox or fillers and fillers not really i know my body and know that that would not work i just reject things really easily like i said i rejected multiple piercings when i was younger i had two iud's and my body rejected both of those so i feel like foreign objects in my body do not get along and the concept of filler moving really really freaks me out so for me i just couldn't handle that um botox i have kind of considered I am honestly holding off because I haven't done really any research on it and I don't know too much about it. I don't know if there's a big difference between cosmetic Botox and more medical Botox either, like in 
the type of Botox. I don't know if it's the same or like depending on where it's injected, if it does different things. Um, but I'd be interested in getting a little bit in my forehead just because I feel like I've always really raised my brows to try to make my forehead appear smaller. So I kind of inherently do it and now have like fine lines from that. And also I just get a headache because I'm constantly raising my forehead for no reason. And I feel like if I had Botox, it would force me to not and just like my face would rest for a second. So I've considered it from that angle. And then I also have this vein in my forehead. I don't, I'm feeling quite chill right now, so it's not protruding, but it pops out. It really loves to make an appearance. Um, and I don't know why, but I feel like Botox would fix that if I could get it, like, I, I don't know if they put it in the vein or like around the vein or in the muscle. I, I don't know shit about shit, but I feel like that would alleviate that problem. Um, but I also kind of feel like it's just not that big of a deal. Like, do I really need to pay and maintain to keep up with something that I'm probably the only one that notices? And then once you start, it's kind of hard to stop. And I do like the idea of being okay with aging. Like, it's kind of a privilege to grow old and aging is a sign that you're living and like having a good life, arguably. So I'm not sure. It's not something I'm completely against, but it's not something that I've made plans to do or see happening in the immediate future. Next question I got a couple times was if I'm still incorporating minimalism into my life and if I think it helps for busy people. And I would say, yes, I live a somewhat minimalist life. Everybody has a different definition of that. Um, to me, minimalism is just only owning items that you use or appreciate. Um, I know for some people it's like, you literally don't own anything and that's, I'm not that side of minimalist by any means, but I feel like the way I think about it is if I had five hours to pack up my apartment, could I do it? Like, could I get all of my belongings packed in five hours? Um, and if I can do that, then I like am somewhat of a minimalist. And I'd say I really just don't have that much stuff, especially in my apartment. I think the most stuff I own is clothing and I've been itching to go through it just because I feel like I have so much stuff that either doesn't fit anymore, it's not my style, or I've kind of kept because I want to replace it and I'm in that weird in between where it's like, oh, well, I have this pair of black jeans that kind of fit and this pair of black jeans that kind of fit, but I really want to get a pair that looks like this and I just need to buy that one pair that fits right and I really like and then sell the other two or donate the other two. Um, so I need to really just focus one day and just do that. I haven't thought much about minimalism and people with busier lives, but I think it does help just because you're eliminating choice and decision a lot of the times because everything either has its place, you only have one of something, or there's only so many items to choose from. So I think it does help for me. I find when I have less items in my closet, I actually create better outfits because I'm more creative on what can be paired together or I feel more confident in it because I'm only owning things that I feel good in um kind of same with like a skincare routine or stuff like that like I just don't have to open my cabinet and look through 25 products and figure out what's best for my skin that day I just have the one moisturizer that works well and my one face wash that works well for me so I feel like it does benefit people with busier lives because it creates a routine and a schedule just because there's no other options for you maybe i don't know if that makes sense and then the last question i'm going to answer is top three goals for the next three months and i really liked this i like the idea of this being like a quarterly q a and kind of ending the q a every time with three goals for the next three months um so my first goal is to get into journaling i feel like i put a lot of pressure on myself that I don't know how I want my journal to be. I don't know what format I want it to be or what I want to document. And I just need to start doing it. Even if it's like a little weekly recap of fun memories with friends or things that I thought about that I want to remember or, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like I put a lot of pressure on making things perfect sometimes that I just don't do them because it feels daunting then to me. Um, so I want to get into that. I want to refocus on saving money. I feel like I've kind of slipped up on that the last six, eight months. I've just really stopped tracking how much money I've been spending and living not like carelessly. That's not the right word because I feel like I'm still spending appropriately. I just haven't been saving as much money as I know that I can. So I want to get better at just focusing in on a budget again and making sure I'm investing my money well and stuff like that. I might film another what I spend in a week video because it's been a while and 
honestly, I'm kind of scared of what I spend in a week now compared to when I first moved to DC. So I feel like that would be very grounding and refreshing, probably in a bad way for me, but would really just like reel me in. So I kind of want to do that. And then the last goal I have is to travel somewhere fun after a work event that I'm hosting in a couple of weeks um, with my company, just because it's been a really heavy lift and I'm excited for it, but excited to have a break after. And I guess kind of the opposite of saving money, like knowing when it's okay to spend money too and you know, justifying going somewhere a little bit further away or just seeing something new to refresh and get out of DC for a little bit, even though I really do love it here, I think. It's healthy to leave and come back so those are my goals that is everything that i'm going to be answering in this week's q a video thank you guys so much for submitting such good questions and always supporting me and my channel i know i touched on it earlier in the video but it's definitely something that doesn't go unnoticed and i really do appreciate it so thank you guys and i'll see you guys next week bye